Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, I want to discuss the forces that are exerted on an object that is traveling through a vertical loop. In this slide here, I show uh, four free body diagrams for an object as it travels through a vertical loop. And what I want to do is I want to consider what this normal force has to be so that this object will travel through the circular path. So starting with this point down here at the bottom, I can see that the normal force is pointing inwards towards the center of the object's circular path, whereas the gravitational force is pointing away. Now I know that the net force pointing inwards towards the center of my circular path has to cause the centripetal acceleration, so that means the magnitude of that has to equal mv squared divided by r. Since the normal force is pointing inwards towards the center of the circle, and the gravitational force is pointing away, I can see that the normal force minus the gravitational force has to equal mv squared over r. I subtract the gravitational force because the gravitational force is pointing away from the center of the circle. Solving for the normal force, I see that the normal force is equal to the gravitational force plus mv squared over r. So the normal force not only has to support this object against gravity, it also has to supply an additional force that's equal to mv squared over r to cause the centripetal acceleration for this object. At point two over here on the right, we can see that the only force that is pointing inwards towards the center of the circular path is the normal force that is being exerted on this object. The gravitational force just points it straight down, so it doesn't affect this at all. So this means that the normal force is just going to be equal to mv squared over r. Now considering the top of the uh, circular path, we see that the gravitational force and the normal force are both pointing inwards towards the center of the circular path. So it's the sum of these two forces that is causing my centripetal acceleration. So I have that the normal force plus the gravitational force is equal to mv squared divided by r. This means that my normal force is equal to mv squared divided by r minus the gravitational force. One thing that I'd like to point out is that it is this point right here that determines whether or not an object is moving fast enough to make it through the circular path. The reason it's this point right here is because we've got this formula right here. It says my normal force is equal to mv squared over r minus the gravitational force. So if this number is negative, then the object won't be able to make it through the center of the circular path because a negative number for the normal force up here would mean the normal force is pulling up on the object. But that's not possible, right? The normal force can only push down against the surface. Finally, considering this fourth point right here, well, hopefully it's obvious that that's pretty much the same as this point over here at number two. So the normal force is just equal to mv squared over r. So I want to consider a, an example of this. Uh, it says here, a first stone is attached to a string and then it's whirled around in a horizontal circle with a radius of 0.95 meters. Then the rock is uh, swung vertically at the same speed with the same radius. And when the, the rock is being swung in the vertical loop, its tension, its maximum tension, is 10% larger than the tension that was in the string when the string was, uh, when the rock was whirled around in a horizontal circle. So the question is, how fast is this rock being swung around for the maximum tension in the vertical loop to be 10 times larger than the tension in the horizontal uh, string. So let me go ahead and open up a blank screen here. And let me write down what was given to us. So we found, we were given that the radius is equal to 0.95 meters. And we were told that the maximum tension in the vertical loop is equal to 10% uh, 110%, so it's 10% larger than uh, the tension that was in the horizontal loop. So I want to come up with a way to relate these two things. 
So first I want to consider the object as it's traveling in a, uh, a horizontal circle, circular path. So let me go ahead and try to draw like a little circle here. So this is for the horizontal. So in this case, we've got an object that's traveling in the circular path. And the only force that is being exerted on this object is the tension, which points inwards towards the center of the circle. So we can see that this tension, this horizontal tension, is equal to mv squared divided by r. Now, when the object is being swung around in a vertical loop, the first thing we need to do is figure out when does the maximum tension occur. So if this is a vertical loop, so it's being swung around in a vertical loop like this. So there's two places we might consider, either the top of the loop or the bottom of the loop. Okay. So at the top of the loop, there are two forces exerted on the object. There's gravity that points down, and there's the tension force that points down. At the bottom of the loop, gravity points down away from the center of the circle, and the tension points upwards towards the center of the circle. Looking at this, we can see that the tension is the maximum when it's at the bottom of the loop, and it's a minimum when it's at the top. Right? It's a maximum here because the tension not only has to overcome the gravitational force that's pulling down on the object, it also has to supply the centripetal acceleration. So the maximum tension for the vertical loop is equal to mv squared over r plus m times g. Now I know that the maximum tension is equal to 110% uh, of the horizontal. So now I can plug both of these things into this formula up here, and then I can solve for the velocity. So if I do that, I have that I've got mv squared over r plus mg is equal to 1.1 times mv squared over r. The masses cancel, and if I uh, rearrange this, so, so I want to take these two things that both have velocity and move them both to the same side. So I'm going to subtract v squared over r from both sides. If I do that, the only thing I'm left with over here is g, because this will go away. Over here, I'm going to subtract v squared over r, so I'm going to have 0.1 v squared over r. Or I can write this as 1 over 10 v squared over r. So solving for v, I want to multiply both sides by 10r. I get v squared is equal to 10gr. Uh, and then taking the square root, v is equal to the square root of 10gr. And if I plug these numbers into a calculator, I see that this is equal to 965 meters per second. So that's how fast this rock has to be whirled around so that when it's being rolled around in a vertical loop like this, the maximum tension that's exerted by this, this string is 10% larger than the tension that was exerted when it was being whirled around in a horizontal loop like this.